Phytic acid messes with teeth and causes countless oral health issues. Today, you will learn the truth about why the grains you are consuming are interfering with the healing of your teeth and gums. We will go through some things you can do to prepare them in a better way so phytic acid's negative effects can be minimized. Pay close attention as it might get a bit complicated. What is phytic acid? Phytic acid is the principal storage form of phosphorus in most plant tissues, especially the bran portion of grains and other seeds. Nuts, seeds, beans, and tubers all contain phytic acid. It's thought to be responsible for their longevity, which some studies have shown to be up to 400 years. It's been generally considered as an anti-nutrient because it has a strong ability to bond to various metal ions, such as calcium and zinc. But the most worrying is its ability to bond to phosphorus to prevent its release. Some studies have indicated that phosphorus could be more important than even calcium when it comes to remineralizing teeth. Did you know that phosphorus is the second most abundant mineral in our bodies and is present in every cell? 85% of it is found in bones and teeth. A deficiency in this mineral can cause tooth decay, as well as many other non-oral related problems. Phytic acid also inhibits enzymes that are needed to digest food, including pepsin, which is needed for the breakdown of proteins in the stomach. How to eliminate phytic acid. Since phosphorus is a crucial element in teeth remineralization, we want to get rid of the bound phosphorus as phytic acid from our diet as much as possible. If for some reason you can't eliminate it, then supplementing with vitamins C, D, and calcium will be required to block phytic acid's effect. Soaking and sprouting your grains. Sprouting is a good first step in trying to reduce phytic acid. It's basically germinating the seeds, grains, or nuts. The process reduces phytic acid by up to 20 to 30 percent, which does not seem a lot, but it's better than nothing. In one laboratory study, oats were soaked for 16 hours at a constant temperature of 77 degrees Celsius, and this only reduced the phytic acid content by 5 to 10 percent. Soaking does not reduce the phytic acid content of oats, quinoa, sorghum, corn, amaranth, wheat, mung beans, and some seeds. But this does not paint the whole picture because although soaking alone did not reduce the phytic acid, if you cooked the quinoa after soaking, you'd reduce the phytic acid content by 61%. The same thing happened with beans. Soaking and then cooking them reduced phytic acid by 50%. For lentils, it was higher at 76%. Another interesting report showed that storing beans in humid and warm conditions reduced phytic acid by 65%. What we recommend. If you can't live without grains, beans, etc., then you must soak them before you consume them. Ideally, leave them in water overnight and then cook them before eating. We also recommend you supplement with vitamins C and D to minimize as much phytic acid in your body as possible. It can't be all bad, right? Phytic acid is not good for teeth healing. We've already mentioned this, but it does have some beneficial properties, like being an antioxidant and having anti-tumor effects. If you're someone with healthy teeth and also consume grains on a regular basis, then you really don't need to worry too much. But if your teeth are in bad shape and all you eat is grains, nuts, beans, then you know what the problem is. Follow the advice about soaking and sprouting these foods before you consume them to kickstart your teeth healing process. We hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe, share, and comment. Thanks, and see you next week.